The Lord be with you. And with your <clears throat> A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The 72 disciples returned rejoicing and said to Jesus, Lord, even the demons are subject to us because of your name. And Jesus said, I have observed Satan fall like lightning from the sky. Behold, I have given you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and upon the full force of the enemy, and nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice because the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. At that very moment, he rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I give you praise, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Then turning to his disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I say to you, many prophets and kings desired to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Bulahang weekend kanatong tanan. In the Gospel reading where Jesus was talking about everything handed over to him by his father, and knowing the son except the father, and the father except the son, and to those for whom the son wishes to reveal him, actually is significant in the sense that there are really special persons or people whom the son chooses to reveal himself. But that is not to be understood exclusively because these people whom the Lord has chosen or had chosen also takes or embrace, embraces the particular mission of making the Son known to other people. And that's the reason why uh, there is always a very interesting issue in the church about private revelations. Because private revelations somehow had to be kept privately. That's why it's called private revelation. But then the practice and the embracing of such a great privilege, which is sometimes even understood as a burden, needs to be practically shared with others. But the sharing part, walay pugsanay, as we say it in Cebuano. That's the reason why when we talk about private revelations, there are many people who frown at us or practically who react. But it should not discourage the person with whom or for whom such a special revelation is given. Although some people would call that person crazy or something like that or that the, the nuts are torn, no? but it is something that is a very special gift. And that is what it means. That the Son or God or the Son of God or Jesus himself has special people to whom he reveals himself. But then it doesn't stop there because that becomes a burden if you do not practically share it. This is basically the experience of the prophets in the Old Testament. The prophet Jeremiah expressed something about, I don't want to speak about you, but if I keep it myself, I feel like there's fire in my bones. No, it's burdening me unless I will express it. And so this is now the kind of, of thing that we have to take into perspective. Because whether we like it or not, Jesus or God, all of them in the Blessed Trinity, especially the Holy Spirit, will always touch people. And once we are being touched by it, we, we do not only just feel the privilege, but at the same time, there is a mission. But take note, again, I repeat uh, for the second time, 
wa lay pug sanay no kay mo mangud na usahay nang mahitabo nato mamugos mangud da usahay no but of course it takes god's grace and his inspiration as well to take into perspective and to embrace the very special privilege of knowing him so that we can make him known to others as well amen